All right, everybody. Well, I'm here with Master Arborist Kevin Ham. We're going to be talking about cabling today. So we've got this really big, really awesome Siberian elm tree. I don't think I've ever worked on one of these before. Um, and it's got some old cables up there. You know, you can kind of see if I zoom in a little bit. And we're going to be replacing one of them because it has it, it's attached to a decayed limb. I think you can see it from over here. You can kind of see it right there. Anyways, there are a bunch of cables in this tree and there's one attached to that decayed stub up there and we're gonna go replace it. So we're gonna talk about cabling. I'm glad to do this with Kevin because he's you know, even more knowledgeable than I am. And we're just gonna talk about the benefits of cabling a tree, best practices, how to do it. This is a really big tree, so we're gonna put our gear on. He's setting lines. We're, we're gonna climb up it and you know, so it's it's a huge tree. This isn't a climbing tutorial. This is just about cabling. So the the the, the fundamental practices are going to be the exact same. If it's a small tree on the ground, it's going to be just the exact same concepts as this big tree. But we do got to climb up there before we can get started. So we're going to put our gear on. We're going to head up, and we'll talk a little more about cabling once we're up there. Don't try that at home. Is that your first try? That was a beautiful throw, Kevin. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Man, you got that way up there, Kevin. <laughs> nice shot. I'm gonna just start going up then, if that's... All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, that seems long. 50 feet, do we got a 50 foot span? That's crazy. It might be. <sighs> Where'd it go from here? Oh man. <laughs> Got a big one. Well, now what do I do? Look at you. What do I go? What do I do? Do I just wait here? Yeah, I, I told you. You told me what? <laughs> oh, that'd be waiting? I just want to know am, am I setting the cable right here? Somewhere in that area. I'll uh I'll go up and be where it's gonna go to. Come on. Yeah. Big cable <sighs> cutter for three ace. Good job, man. Maybe he puts them in here. Hey, I got a big pair. I found a pair. Okay, good. Do we have a little bag? Yeah, I got a little bag. Okay. Jacob to the rescue. I just want to get better positioning. I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll just set up a redirect or something. I just want to be on top of the limb. Tie a little bowl in. I just always tie the Yosemite finish. So it's a habit. Attach that to there, so we'll have a line to pull later. All right, pull that up. This is crazy, man. This is by far the longest cable cable I've ever seen. <laughs> How am I gonna get it to you? <laughs> I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull it over to me. 
Oh, you're tying it to your rope. I'm, yeah, I'm tying it to a tagline. These trees take a lot of foresight. Is somebody available to send a drill up to Jacob? He's gonna need one pretty soon. All right, coming up, Jake. We're gonna need that drill back here. Okay, where, where am I drilling this thing? I'll, I'll tell you. Wow, I don't know if I got a decent tie-in point. That baby's flexing. Oh, I'm not gonna climb on that branch, Jacob. That's intense. That's what I thought when you first said it. I was like, dang, these are strong trees. <laughs> Why didn't you talk to me more? <laughs> I thought you knew what you were doing. Whoa, look at that. Slam. I was like, he knows what he's doing. I did think that though when you pulled up. I was like, wow, that is really small. And I'm just walking around and never testing it. And I'm like, ah, no, I think not. Okay, can we say wasted time? I've got that line in there. I'm gonna use it to meal a line up there. You see my rope bag right there, the monkey beaver one? Could you do me a favor and send that rope up to me? So Jake, you probably haven't thrown enough throw line to think of this, but I, I'm i gonna use my throw to set my line in a different crotch with a different throw line. I'm gonna mule a throw line up. Uh, up the climbing, like you're gonna replace the climbing line with the throw line? I, I already did that. And now I'm gonna attach two throw lines together and mule another throw line into a different crotch because I have such a high throw there. Like you're gonna swing it? I'm gonna swing it into a different crotch. Yeah, they don't throw lines out in Seattle. They just put the spikes on and climb up the tree. <laughs> Sounds kind of nice right now. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to get homesick, trying to figure out what to do with these ropes. <laughs> I put on my special pruning spikes. Yeah, I should have sent you up this side. Of course, you wouldn't have climbed on that. <laughs> So we'd, we'd both be on the ground still. I would have, I would have because I, I thought that you knew what you were doing. Yeah. I would have climbed it. I wouldn't have let you once I saw it flex. All right, there we go. Mission accomplished. I felt a lot better about being tied into the tip of this limb until you moved your throw ball spot. <laughs> until... Ouch, where are my clothes? I don't know how we're gonna close All right. All right, Jake, you're shooting for my ascender here from below your, just below your feet. And then you got to drill angles. So you almost got to go down to that little crook in the branch. Yeah, okay. Sit down and drill right at the top of that little S curve. Are you sufficiently redirected? You know, I'm just double lined over this very small branch. Oh, with your climbing line, you got your climbing line up there. That's a good idea. Could I have somebody come and attach my tag line? I can really see in these trees why people would want to have two climbing lines. Yeah, you've probably always wondered how in the world, <laughs> what is even the application? I see it now, I see the light. <laughs> Told Mark to put my gear in the truck yesterday and he said, yeah, there was rope in that yellow bag. Like he gave me a five ace rigging rope for my climb rope. So then I had to use Preston's rope, which is several millimeters smaller than mine. So I'm adjusting my akimbo right now to get my rope working again. I think I did it right. Do you think the rope right here would work? I'm um, actually up right there. So if you scooch up about 18 inches, you'll be probably in a good position to drill. Just scooch on up, okay. All right, so this is kind of an awkward tree to demonstrate the cabling on because we are way, I mean, I'm just dangling way out on this limb, but basically, you know, there are two schools of thought as far as cabling goes. There's, you have synthetic options, which generally is made a rope, it'll wrap around the trunk and span over and wrap around the trunk over there. What we're doing here is we're doing the more tried and true method where we drill through the tree, just a straight hole right through the tree and we're gonna put this cable through it and we're gonna put a stopper on the end of it. And it's actually pretty easy to do. 
They're climbing the Siberian Elm isn't. Okay, so you think right here, Kevin? Yeah, go a little higher. Yeah, right about right about there, and then try to aim right right in my hand. Just flip yourself around on that limb. <laughs> just yeah, just swing. <laughs> swing to the other side. Yeah, just <laughs> lanyard in there and just, just drop yourself around. Oh man. You'll be looking right at me then. Yeah, let me do a cabling tutorial on a tree that I don't know how to climb well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should have saved this tutorial for Washington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice straight fur and then a bucket truck. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Sideways elm tree. Okay, so we're gonna drill through. We're gonna try to aim so the hole. Little, little, little to your left. To my left. Yeah, put it right between your ropes. <laughs> yeah. That good? R wrap those babies up. All right. <laughs> that should be good. Yeah. Gotta aim this towards Kevin. Uh, pull all that out. Okay. Now you want this? Yeah, but you can just send it down, then somebody will send it up to me. All right. This is definitely a first for me. <laughs> Somebody get a picture of me at some point too. <laughs> I'll take one from here. So now that I've got this hole that runs through the tree right here, you know, you can see through there a little bit. So you might think this is a relatively large limb and you might think that's a big wound, but you gotta understand is that the interior of the tree is really just there for structural integrity. All the nutrients and everything is really transported in the sapwood, which is just the last few rings, you know, on the outside of the limb. So this wound is really only about the size of my finger on each side of the tree. It's a very small wound. And when we put the cable through it over the years, this will compartmentalize, it'll close up. And it's basically that tunnel is going to remain in the tree, but it's going to be basically contained in a box, you know, because it will wall itself off eventually. So. This is really a very, very small wound to the tree. The tree really isn't gonna mind. All right, so we're just gonna slide that through there. Okay, all right, so we're sticking out. And then if you get your side all set, then you'll have to send me the other half, put that bag down and they'll send that up to me. Because when I start pulling on that, we don't want it to come out and you've gotta I do think I have to swing under to set this. Man, now I wish I was on this rope. <laughs> Be sure to grab the right side, Jake. <laughs> Does anybody have like an akimbo or something I could borrow? Something midline attachable. In my bag, there's a Petzl rig. Yeah, that'd be great. It's just that the, the rope I tied my line into, the, that limb is super small. You'd only drop about four feet. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, I think I'm just being a baby. I think you're right, I don't think I need. I'll take it, you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to coerce you. I... Don't you remember me saying this will be so easy? <laughs> I, was just... I was just trying to be funny. <laughs> this, this will be fast. <laughs> Okay, you can you can hook it onto a, the carabiner onto your saddle before you even hook it up. That way you'll be orientated correctly. Uh, I, I think it makes sense. There's a little diagram. I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need instructions. I'm a man. <laughs> I don't need any stinking sketch. <laughs> I'm looking at some stinking instructions. <laughs> Does it only descend? I, it only descends. I mean, you can you can put you can pull it back up, as you, you can just like uh, I climbed on that for for years. It doesn't seem like the rope wants to move in any direction. Maybe I do need the stinking instructions. I feel like it could only go in one way. Uh, actually, you put it in exactly backwards. So I was close. 
Yeah, you just would have fallen all the way to the ground. <laughs> yeah. It seems backwards when you do it. Oh yeah. And now your belay, your belay hand, your belay rope goes over that little. Don't you do any rock climbing out there in the Cascades? Uh, some people do. <laughs> and then when you fold it down, it locks it, and then you go this way, it opens it. So you're getting back at me for making you sit up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we're done with the drill. <sighs> yeah, okay, I'm gonna swing around now to the underside. I think I need pliers. It's in that bag, in that yellow bag. Did it fall out? Is there not a yellow, is there not a plier in there? Uh, it's probably on the roof. No, there are no pliers in here. Yeah, it's probably on the roof. What a mess. This is a blooper reel. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, this is awkward in case, in case you don't know if you're just, just found the channel. I'm from Washington state and mm -hmm. I'm working in Wisconsin right now, so our trees are like way straight and tall, and all the trees here are way sideways and sprawly. So this is way different for me, being out on this one individual limb 50 feet away from the trunk. I mean, this is crazy for, different from what I'm used to. This tree's incredible. So yeah, that's why I'm kind of struggling up here. We need a pliers, we dropped one. Jake dropped my pliers. We dropped the pliers. And he lost it. <laughs> I'm not convinced flyers are in this bag. <laughs> Mercy. I don't, I don't know why I gave Jake the tool. I, I don't think there were pliers in that bag, so I'm sticking with it. I'm just getting to know Jacob. I, you know, I, you know I, I can't know these little idiosyncrasies. He's working. I, he's trying to improvise over here. Maybe, I'll, maybe I can use my muscles. Maybe go MacGyver over there and start <laughs> make pliers out of my foot ascender or something. Yeah. Right. All right. So the basic concept is you've got, you know, this wire here, and I want to stop it. So I'm gonna put this cap on it. And I'm gonna try to find the center. Usually I have pliers. I'm gonna wonder if I can do this without pliers. We're gonna twist this open. And I'm going to slide this onto the middle one, just like that. I don't know exactly how far down you go. I just go, uh, you know, you, you want it to be in the center, so that's probably good. And then we're going to slide this. And like that. And now this cable is occupying so much space that the cone can't pass through. I might be able to do this with my hands. Yeah, if you make it long enough. Yeah. I think we're gonna make do. I bend these slightly sideways. This isn't the prettiest. Get up. It'll work. Are you getting that bent or not quite? I think I, I think I can get it. So I just take the middle one and I'm just gonna bend this so that the cone can't slide down anymore. And so it's bent. If we pull on it, like if we pull on the cable, I think it'll set. It'll set. So, all right, we need the GRCS set up on this real quick because I want, I want a little tug. Okay. See, so this cone is just barely big enough to fit through this nut right here. So just bending the prong out, prongs out like this. You know, we're gonna bring the leader together, and Kevin's gonna do his side, and when we release it, this is gonna set. And this cone will actually go a little further into this nut and it's going to be really tight that's another thing you, you've got to bring the leaders together a little bit set it and then release them so kevin's going to set his side i i think my side's fine kevin you're going to work i think it'll work because once you tighten yours and re and set it and release it yeah i just don't see this going anywhere you know right so i'm going to head down okay Right. You might have to help me get the cable above that. Oh yeah, yeah. Around those uh, branches. Okay. 
This isn't the prettiest. Hopefully Kevin's side looks better. What? <laughs> just jump back up on top of that limb. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> just a hop, skip, and a jump. Let me see how I do here. I I can probably. I mean, I I can re I can kind of flick this thing a little bit. Shake it. it. Might just be a matter of shaking it. I have never done a cable even close to this long before. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. It's like a 50 foot cable. Oh, I'm not gonna get it through that crotch. Oh, I'll give it a jiggle. There you go. Thank you. See, if you weren't there, I wouldn't have got that. So am I done You're hanging done. on for dear life? You're done. You can go. I'm out. Don't you want somebody to take a picture of you? <laughs> Here, here, here's, here's Jake. I had to talk him off this limb. He's all bear hugged onto it. <laughs> I got your pliers. Oh. I found them. You know, I, I was able to muscle it. Kevin, do you need them? Uh, no, I never thought they were necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Well, that was an adventure. Yeah, crank her up. You dropped, you could have killed one of us, man. What? Maybe we have helmets. Oh, man. That's I don't think it was in my bag. I, I'm sticking with my story. It was in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kevin. I'm going to need a bolt cutter on my line. All right, so I'm on the ground now. Kevin's going to tighten it up. They've got the GRCS here. You know, some people use a ratchet strap, or if it's a small tree, you might even just do it with like a piece of rope in your hand or something. But this is a big tree, so. Are you gonna crank it at all? Whatever he tells me to. Uh, you ready, Kevin? Yeah, crank her up. All right, that's probably tight enough. That's tight enough. And so now Kevin's gonna set his side. And then when we release this, it'll settle into the cable, into that stopper nut, and then it'll really be nice and tight and permanent. I'm trying to hang on to it at the same time so it doesn't fall down and break a window. Uh, stand clear. Little piece of snake coming down. Yeah, and so tree cabling is a really good way to preserve your trees if you're worried about them splitting apart. You know, trees, more often than them falling over completely, they'll partially fail. And it's almost always at unions here, I'll show you. So these are both sugar maples. When you're dealing with trees, you know, these unions where multiple leaders grow out, this is the part that you have to look at. So if you look at this tree, it's a nice U shape. And the tree has room to expand and grow and add on wood, and that is, extremely strong you know that's a really nice union the stuff that you have to worry about is when you start getting into trees like this and you can actually see this tree has been cabled before up there you know when you get into these tight unions right here you see you've got this tight v shape right here that's called included bark and what's happening is the trees are adding on layers of wood every year and they never really fuse together. They just kind of push each other apart as they get bigger and bigger. So wh what happens is as the tree puts on wood, it just keeps smushing into each other. And eventually these tight seams tend to peel off and they tend to break. And so generally speaking, when we look for unions, V shape is bad and U shape is good. So a lot of times if they've got a tree that they want to preserve, but it has a potential you know, it has unions that are potentially going to break out, which could, you know, hit your beautiful house or even just, even if there isn't a house under it, it could just damage your tree so bad having that big tear out. So setting a cable in it is a really good way to just add a little structural integrity to the tree to prevent it from splitting out completely. Hey Jake, what's the best way to find the middle one? <laughs> the middle one? Yeah. Well, you... You kind of break it apart and guess which one's the middle, and if you're wrong, just, just move them around and, and make it the middle. Yeah, make it the middle one, yeah. So, yeah, we're getting, getting it pretty close here. So we'll bend this. 
down. <sighs> okay, can I get somebody to release some tension? Yeah, let her out. Okay, we're free. So now we're, we're tensioned up. So that can't pull out. We can cut these off, make them shorter. Yeah, so there you go. Done. All right, I'm sending these cutters down. Oh, I, I need the cutters. Because I got to cut this cable off. Didn't. Nicely done. Nice job, Kevin. Yeah, I don't know if you can say nice job. I can say whatever yes. I want. Yeah, you can <laughs> it's a free country. It. Okay, okay. You can say what you want. All right, so we'll talk about synthetic cable real quick, the Cobra cable stuff. I've always been sort of ambivalent towards using steel or synthetic cabling. I've never really uh, known or seen much difference. And I was talking to Kevin about it and he was like, hey, I want to show you this tree. They had cabling done years ago and look at what the Cobra cable is doing. I mean, we've got a lot of fraying. It's, it's starting to grow into the, the bark. Uh, over the years, the, the little splicing action that's supposed to allow it to expand uh, it seems to be pulled out. And I don't know if the squirrels pulled that out or <laughs> what happened here, but um, definitely the fraying is probably squirrels chewing on it, and they just like to to get after things. And so if if you know we've always done steel cable with through bolting, uh, which gets incorporated in, into the tree real efficiently. And, you know, 15 years later, I go back and look at it and it's the same galvanized cable I put in. And it's just, the tree's gonna fall apart before that cable does. The idea is to come back and inspect the cable all the time. But the reality of life is, you, you don't get back here to look at it. It's a big old silver maple. Some people would say, just get rid of it. But you know, when you're the homeowner and you want this big tree in your backyard, um, and we can mitigate the risk, get it to an acceptable level of risk, then we'll, we'll do that. But uh, definitely it needs to be upgraded because the, the Cobra is degrading at this point. But anyways, yeah, that's a good example of some of the downsides of using a synthetic cable. You know, it, the, the tree is growing all the time and it's expanding, it's adding on layers of wood and it starts to enclose the cable, which, you know, is choking off the cambium, restricting the flow of nutrients and all sorts of, and creating a weak point in the stem too, from that girdling effect of not climbing up there and adjusting it over the years. So the steel cable is probably a better permanent solution. So cool example, Kevin. Thanks for showing me that. Yeah, the reason we're cabling this black oak is because it's got that fat crack in it. If this were a different species of tree that wasn't so tough, we might be more likely to remove it probably but also you know this guy it, it's not going to hit his house if it does fail it's a nice big tree probably really nice shade in the summer and he wants to try to save it so we're putting that cable up there to try to hold it together best we can some massive oak oh yeah i am overdressed today shouldn't have uh worn the extra shirt okay so i have drilled this through, we're going over to that lead there, and we leave this open, and we're gonna tighten this up like this, pull it tight, and then we're gonna come back over here, we're gonna crank this tight and take the tension out. Crank some tension out on the other side as well. So what's kind of nice, you don't necessarily need a, a winch type device to pull, pull this cable tight. You can just utilize the threads and then we can cut off the extra threads later. Uh, this is through bolting. So we've discussed three different types of cabling, the, the Cobra synthetics that wrap around the trunk. Then we did the 
the cable that you drill a smaller hole and the actual cable goes through the hole and you put a termination end on the end. And now this is, you know, a, a cast threaded bolt. And so this holding power stays for years and years and years. And, you know, in this tree, we've got a actual, you know, physical crack, pretty significant. And the, uh, the homeowner just wants to preserve the tree. It's out here in the middle of the backyard. You know, it kind of threatens his garage. He just wants to add some added strength to make sure this stays here. And so we're, we're gonna do that for him. That crack's been there for years and years and years. And so we're gonna do some reduction pruning uh, tomorrow. It's getting late in the day here now. But uh, Jacob's trying to get up in the tree over there. <laughs> you, can, you can edit this out. He looked a lot like that in the last tree we did a cable in. As you can see, it's those branches up there. It's, his rope's wrapped around that little twig just pulling on I'm him. I'm exactly where I want to be. <laughs> yeah. Here, let me throw you a rope. <laughs> you can pull on mine and give, give yourself leverage around. You insist. It might work. Look at that. Just a little extra you needed. Yeah, this is a really hairy oak. So. These trees are easy to climb. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to actually go down and get, I forgot a cable cutter. <laughs> <All right. laughs> the joy of, of, of cabling without ground guys. We came over to a different place to do this. I'll go get the uh, cable cutter. All right, so this is later in the afternoon. We did that big Siberian elm this morning. And now Kevin and I just pruned at a different job, this really big black oak. And uh, this is the first one I've ever climbed. They're kind of hard to climb, just like everything else out here. Anyways, this is the style of cable that Kevin usually does. So I guess he bought that rig guy system uh, because that's what I'm familiar with and we were just going to demonstrate how to do that. And then this is the kind that he does, which is very similar, but probably just a little more industrial. So he already set that side. I'm going to set this side. We're going to drill a hole through the tree over here. Let's stick that bolt through. So I didn't thread the nut all the way on. I was assuming we use it to tighten it. That is correct. Yeah, we do. I'm amazed that you can foot lock like that on a single line. I'm thinking I'm being kind of sloppy today. <laughs> I could not do that. Why didn't you tell me there was a scaffolding branch on this side? You're the master arborist. Yeah, I know. It's oversold. <laughs> You wanna what, use my rope or something? <laughs> I think I just did that to you. You got this nice rope right here that you can use if you want. You want my 240 pounds <laughs> <laughs> hanging on your rope? Just put that back. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy, I got all the force going in the wrong direction. There we go. Probably aren't a lot of fat tree climbers around these parts. You call me fat? <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that I'm saying that in the Pacific Northwest you can you can get by if you're a fat climber. Oh, throw the old spurs on and go. You can you can be you can be a little chubby. <laughs> That's fine. Hang on to that. Good. So I'll just put this cable puller on it. That way we won't lose it when you cut it. I would I would just you know hook my lanyard to that to hold it when I when I cut it. So, so now I'll hold that up there. Yeah. Uh, we, we can probably push that in a little bit. Yeah. Hold yeah. the cable up to the thimble. Okay. And then you know you can be approximate and then pick a spot right in there to cut. I'm thinking you're long. Long? You better long. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Right. <sighs> okay, now. Just throw it. this down. Oh, yeah, you're both right there. Did I just throw this down? Wait, let's we make sure to? we're at the right length. Uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can drop that. Okay. I'll, I'll just take it. 
And then, uh, have you ever wrapped up one of those? No. It just, is it like a Pressic? A, a little bit. Um, un unwrap it. I'll hold this. Just unwrap them. Okay. And then put it up in as close as you can to the bolt. Pull the bolt out a little ways if you have to. And you're gonna wrap one side first. So just grab one side of that thing. Okay. And then start getting it wrapped. There you go, you got it going now. Okay. Now it gets easy, because now it's holding it for you. Yeah. Um, let me see, let me move your hand so I it's can see which. It's only gonna work one way, right? Yeah, it's only gonna work one way. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, bring that right out to the end. All right, now get your ratchet and tighten that nut all the way down. This is like really bulletproof. Well, I mean, how strong is this wire? Very, uh, you know, it, that, that grip is as strong as the 7,000 pound. Oh, so that's good for 7,000 pounds? Yeah. Wow. And you'll want to draw that all the way up, um, right, to the, right to the bark. Yeah. Crank her wow. till she's tight. <laughs> I've got quite a bit of slack over there too. So. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna go over there and tighten it. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Okay. And then you can take that. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. Got it. I'll put this on. You don't need anything else, do you? I don't need it. What about this thing? Uh, you can take that off. This is, this is just to hold it? Yeah. So, my side's done then, right? You just gotta tighten yeah. yours. Yeah. And then the, and then we're done. Yep. So yeah, you could you could go down, and start packing up because it's getting late. Well, the good news, Jake, is we got a tight cable. Nice. I like that method. You know, it's just real solid. All right, there it is, tight. Nice. So, all right, well, I'm gonna wrap up this cabling video, but you see, I, I'm actually in a tree the next day that uh, well, half of it died, so we're removing it, but Kevin had cabled this tree 10 years ago, and <laughs> that side's dead, but this side is alive, and you can see how well this responded. If you remember the cobra, it was all choked off and everything, and this just grows right through. Very small wound, totally closed. This is what the other side looks like after years. And the rig guy system, the one that we did on the elm is similar, but you see it's it's really a very small wound. It's very stable. That washer's behind the, the bark. Now the bark has covered it. And so you can just see it's a good example of how, I'm not gonna, I'm slipping all around. Um, I'm not gonna do a vi like demonstrate how to tie the Cobra cable. It, it's pretty easy to do. You kind of just bring the rope up and splice it to itself. And the benefit to that is it's really fast and it's really easy. But you know, long term you have to come back and adjust them. Whereas this is permanent. So this is 10 years old, and it looks it looks brand new except for the fact that the wood has covered it. So long term, this is the way to do it. But yeah, so Kevin knows what he's doing. He's a smart guy, but that's that's probably it for this cable video. So hopefully you like that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can support this channel on Patreon. You can check out my website, buy some merch. You can go to backwardsgrind.com slash treason to buy my coffee. So, all right, hopefully that information helped you out. I'll put some websites in the description where you can buy this cabling stuff because there are a lot of options. Um, we obviously didn't go through everything but that's the basic gist of it. You're just holding the tree together. That was a really long video just to say you put the cable in it to hold the tree together. So, all right, I'll see you guys.